continuing the first session. For example, I ask you to inhale your breath for 10 seconds. And you inhale your breath for 10 seconds. And then um, and again I ask you to exhale your breath for 10 seconds. And you are exhaling your breath for 10 seconds. And I ask you to do the same thing for 10 times. And you do the exhaling, inhaling, exhaling, uh, and you ex inhale for 10 seconds, exhale for 10 seconds, and you, you are doing it for 10 times. <coughs> Then you need not uh, do the same thing, and I ask you, you need not uh, continue. Then what will happen? For 10 times, you are regulating your breath, inhaling 10 seconds, exhaling 10 seconds. And afterwards, <coughs> you need not regulate your breath. Then what happens? The breathing will stop? No, it will not stop but it will happen on its own. Your breathing will happen on its own. So in this way, our mind is also functioning like this. Through some meditation or anything, we are regulating our mind. We are uh, set right our mind. We are keeping our mind under a control. So for the beginners, it is okay. But afterwards, we have to put down the mind in a natural process. So this has happened in the case of Buddha. All enlightened masters, some way or other, come across the same thing. It happened in their life. But they do not know what has happened to them. Unconsciously, they come to the same uh, level, same kind of happening, same kind of experience. Uh, if you come across the uh, life history of uh, Ramana Maharishi, the same thing happens. When he was a boy, around 16 years of age, one day he have got the fear of death. Normally, an ordinary person, if he has the, got the fear of death, what will have? What will he do? Naturally, he will do something to get away from the fear. But unnaturally, Ramana did some in a different manner. He accepted the fear of death. He accepted the fear of death wholeheartedly. Sometimes he may, in a position, for example, for the for in his life history, you may uh, you may come across the incidents of his early childhood. Uh, sometimes uh, uh, I think it may be one within one year after the death of his own father, and uh, he, he the family position is not good. He was studying in some other place in the uh, guardianship of some other persons. So his life may be somewhat good, may not be somewhat good. So he may be in a desperate condition. It may be, a, there may be a chance for that, for it. So some way or other, he accepts the fear of death wholeheartedly. Let it be death may come, let it come, and I accept the death wholeheartedly. So he dramatized the uh, yeah, death experience. But the same thing happened for uh, what happened to Buddha, the same thing happened to Ramana Maharishi also. So even though he keep himself in a uh, receptive condition, receptive mode, 
the um, uh, the mind function on its own it begins to function on its own if he wants to be all right without any fear then he will have some uh, work on that uh, aspect but he has no work he he wholeheartedly accept the function of his mind he he, uh, he himself accept wholeheartedly accept the fear so the mind begins to function naturally but this happens to in in, in our cases also we are having the same circumstances in many circum many any times we are during some many problem some crucial problem we may have the uh, we may have the same uh, function of mind but we do not uh, operate upon the fun- uh, different kind of function we do not identify the different kind of function but um, for, for fortunately uh, ramana marisi was able to recognize the different kind of function of his mind as uh, buddha recognized ramana marisi also recognized the different kind of function of his mind so he get away from the fear and he he begins to live in a different form in a different manner so this happen in the case of uh, ramana maharishi in the case of buddha also and if you listen to the history of many masters they will come across the same thing uh, the for example you may know something about jay krishna murti during his childhood during his childhood itself he and his brother nidya was taken by the theosophical society they thought in the in his uh, in his uh, in his later period he will become the master of the world in the spiritual world he will become a world teacher and for that the theosophical society has given him some special training for that and he he did many kind of yoga practices some kriya yogas and he got many transcendental experiences samadhi state many spiritual experiences but even then he has not got the enlightenment he is waiting for the enlightenment but the way the enlightenment is he awaiting even though he has got many spiritual experiences ordinary people cannot get such kind of experiences but he has got some special because of some special training he got some uh, some rare experiences but he has not got the enlightenment and they are he is waiting for the enlightenment so at that time his brother nidya got uh, some illness and he is uh, krishna murti himself is attending the attending his brother at that time they have got some program they are they are living at england and they have got some program at chennai tamil india and they try to travel in a ship but uh, krishna murthy declined that i cannot come because i have to attend my brother at that time they they sought for a prophecy from a godly spirit they used to have some such kind of prophecy and they they get some prophecy and the the prophecy told the angel of the some angel or deity of the theosophical society told that nothing will happen to the brother of j krishna murthy and they uh, krishna murthy can travel for the program 
and they relied upon the prophecy of the deity they traveled and the when they are traveling on the middle of the sea in a ship they got a telegram that uh, his brother was very serious but they do not know what they have to relay whether to relay upon the telegram or to relay upon the prophecy of the deity they confused but during that period another telegram arrived that his brother expired so jay krishna murthy totally collapsed but he has the capacity he can at any time he can go to samadhi state if you sit meditation he can simply go to samadhi state then he can be free from all worries of the world or worries of the death of his brother he can simply go to samadhi state but he did not prefer samadhi state he accepted the sorrow of his sorrow of the death whole heartedly and he closed himself in a single room and he kept himself whole heartedly with the sorrow of his brother one day or two days later he come away from his from the room as a enlightened person the same thing has happened you if you accept the function of your mind whole heartedly naturally the function will function in a different manner it will function naturally but when we try to design our mind when we try to put something in our mind so it is artificial but when you happen some way or other when you when the when the, when the masters happen to be can happen to accept his own mind in a function in a natural way so if the mind function in the natural way that is the liberation of the mind that is the awakening of the mind that is the enlightenment itself but strictly speaking it is not enlightenment this is only liberation but that is the highest state of the spiritual world actually the reality truth is very simple very open but only because of our many theories many practices many things we make the thing as a complicated one but actually actually the liberation enlightenment is not at all a complicated one it is not at all a rare one it is a common one but we have we have uh, put many thing upon them and make it suffocated but it is very easy it is very normal it is a open and it's a natural one and all the masters of the spiritual world got the same thing some way or other as a happening but they most of the people they do not know what has happened to them they do not know the science behind the happening but it is naturally the natural function of our mind is in the liberated state but some way or other they have found out but they do not know the science behind the liberation the science begins behind the transformation of the mind but they all the masters say some way or other they explain the thing they try to communicate and the communication because they rely upon many philosophies some old philosophies or some philosophy of other masters so some way or other they have created some kind of philosophy some kind of explanation thereby we are we are having some something around the enlightenment and the liberation 
but it is very open it is very plain there is no complication unless we make it complicated but at the same time we have to be simple we have to be open then only we can understand the real implications behind the enlightenment and uh, liberation so most of us come to the spiritual world only because of our psychological problem psychological stress and uh, every psychological uh, happenings goes on ways transforming itself naturally we need not correct anything it corrects itself for example we take a vessel with some water some water is there the water is very still if you put our finger on the top of the still water some ripple in the form of a wave will form what we have to do to remove the wave of the water if you smear our hand around the wave another wave will come if you leave it it will be all it, it will settle all on its own we need not do anything so in the same case same thing is happening in our mind also when we face some situation some reaction will come in the form of some emotion whatever form whatever come it will go away naturally we need not do anything but whenever we do whenever we do something it will renew itself the energy will be renewed the emotion will be renewed the psychological function will be renewed but actually we do not know the secret of leaving everything on its own but in the psychological system is like that whatever comes it will reflect and in the next moment it will go but we think we have some duty to correct everything in the psychological world in the psychological world there is no duty for ourselves for example we are we are sitting in a park in front of us some huge tree is there we look at the tree the tree reflects upon our eyes and we there we have the image of the tree on our eyes and after looking at the tree we turn our eyes to other pers- other place where some animal is moving animal is going now which image will reflect upon our eyes when we look at the trees the, the image of the trees will reflect upon our eyes when we turn our eyes upon a animal the eyes the reflection of the the image of the tree will go away and the image of the animal will come so the our uh, our eyes are functioning moment by moment whatever it looks it has the image of the object if it turns away the image of the other thing will come the earlier thing will go away so in this way our ear will also function like this if we have a sound of a bird it will reflect upon our ear the sound of the bird will hear through our ear so if the uh, the bird stop singing the sound of the ear also will go away 
so it also functioning moment by moment all our sensory organs will function moment by moment so if the if the for example if the even after the bird is stop singing stop sounding the sound will not go from our ear is that what is the meaning of that our the, the hearing the hearing system go down wrong so the natural function the natural the healthy function of a sensory organ is that moment moment, moment by moment it has to it has to reply it has to re reflect whatever it is facing the next moment it has to be free from the reflection so that is the normal and natural function of our sensory organs our mind is also the another sensory organ just like the five sensory organ our mind is the sixth sensory organ it has to just like the other sensory organ it has also the capacity to reflect whatever according to its capacity it will reflect sometimes it may have some anger sometimes it may happiness whatever may be it will be it, it will reflect like that but but the, the what is the difference between the other sensory organ and the mind is that in the mind some different kind of functioning is there for example we have some some happiness we want to be happy always if we have some peace of mind in our mind we want to be peaceful forever if we want if you have some fear or sorrow we want to be without fear without sorrow forever we should we we we, we try to be without fear we try to be without sorrow so some effort is there we some selection is there for that we are having some memory and the memory pattern makes us to live like that use the mind like that our mind our memory says this is good this is bad this i want to be forever this i don't want to be anyway 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 so in this way we have a struggle within we we develop a struggle of within our mind but this is all this struggle are artificial it is not natural so the natural function of our mind is just like other sensory organ the only thing is that we are select something some pattern of life some pattern of uh, emotion but the coming the formation of the emotion is natural just like hearing a sound just like feeling an image just like feeling a taste just like feeling hot or cold the feeling of sorrow anger fear everything is natural just like a reflection as the other sensory organ free from their uh, reflection our mind is also free from their from its reflection it is natural process we need not do anything but when we feel we have to do something we have some duty there we enter there because of our entrance there because of our uh, conscious effort we make the thing make the function of our mind in a complicated way, way. so we have no work in the psychological world all all the masters somewhere or other come to the stage 
that we have no work psychologically. Buddha come to the state when he got to the, uh, the nirvana state or enlightenment or liberation, he find himself he has no work. Ramana Maharishi come to that state when he find himself no work. J. Krishnamurti also come to that state. So whoever may be the master, they will come to the state and find themselves that they have no work. So when we find no work there, the mind begins to function on its own. When the mind functions, begins to function on its own, that is liberation. But we, we think liberation is a strange state. We are taught like that, we are imagined like that. But it is a scientific one. It is a practical one. It is an ordinary one. But we imagine it is a strange. But whenever we think it is a strange one, we have to search. We have to search again and again, life after life. We have to, our endlessly we can search. But one day after you put down yourself in a desperate condition, then only you will realize it is under your feet. It is everywhere, each and the very, function, very natural function of our mind is liberation. But an ordinary person will have an idea. The enlightenment is a different thing. It is a strange one. The liberation is a strange one. The awakening is a strange one. Thereby, we are expecting some strange experience. If you read the scripture, read the teachings, read the experience of many masters, along with this this crucial experience, they will say some other thing also. One day I have felt the total universe is one. I feel myself nobody. What I feel, what I look, I, I, f I feel myself every everywhere. Someday somebody says that I, the, the thought is thought has stopped. There was no thought. I was in a thoughtless state. So all these statements create some confusion. But that is an experience. All kind of experience is possible. Through some meditation, some period, some state, some state, it is a state, some state of mind. Through some meditation, through some practices, at any time you can have some, this kind of marvelous experience, but the experience will come and go. But we think the masters will be always in the state, we imagine like that, but it is not like that. But they will come across such kind of experiences. But it will be a passing cloud, just like a passing cloud, such a strange experience may also happen because of their practice. But it is a normal course, it is a normal way of experience. We may be in a thoughtless state for some times. But if you are in a thoughtless state forever, it would be in a uh, samadhi state, it is all right. But in an ordinary way of life, if you are in a thoughtless state, many problems, you have to face many problems. When during my early period of my practice, I have practiced many kind of practices, many kind of meditations. I'm, I have done it for 40 years. 
I have come across many kind of experiences. I was also thought that if I was permanently in a blissful state, sometimes when I, when I do meditation, sometimes some blissful state will, I will occur. It will last for one day, two days, three days, four days, five days. Sometimes it may take, it may last within me for 10 days or 15 days. And gradually, afterwards, it will gradually disappear. And I thought, if I, if it is possible for me to be permanently in the bliss consciousness, it is enlightenment. I think like that. And I practice many things, go to many masters, many uh, teachings. And once I got the experience, blissful experience, and the experience, the bliss, experience of bliss has not gone away, is not, has not go away from me. It permanently settled with me. 24 hours I was in the blissful state. Months after months, I was in the bliss. There was no problem because I am all right. Psychologically, I am all right. Whatever may be the problem in the external world, it may, nothing will touch me. I was in a good state. So I thought I got enlightened. Because what I want to attain, I have attained. I want to attain the blissful state forever, and I attain the blissful state forever. Whether I have any problem, no problem. Whatever is, but even when I have many problems in the external world, it will not touch my uh, psychological factor. Psychological, I was all right. I was in the blissful state. But when the days going or goes on, the blissful side, I, uh, I came to understand the real status of the bliss consciousness. It begins to destroy the health of my body. So that is the nature of the blissful state. So I begin to doubt. So if it is the highest state, if it is the good state, it has to be good in all respect. If it is destroying the health of our body, so how can we rely upon the state? So, if I remove the state from me, I cannot survive. So, that was the position I have to reconsider my approach. So, gradually I begins to remove the bliss consciousness from me, gradually send away, send it away, send it away, and we land in the ordinary state. When I was away from the bliss consciousness, so ordinary problem will hit me. Ordinary problem will affect me. Some create some problem, create some, some pain within me. When I was in the bliss state, no pain. Every, every time I am in a blissful state, nothing is really affect. But when I became an ordinary man once again, all the little problem, all the minor problems begins to affect me. So then afterwards I was in a confusion, what to do? So in that situation alone, I know the natural function of our mind. I have to accept the natural function of mind as the other masters understood. 
and whenever i understand that i have to accept the function of the mind in a natural way then when when we understand myself i feel this is the real understanding when i understand myself in a in this natural way afterwards when i look at the other master all the masters came the same way in the same level in the same uh, same route all got the same understanding all got the same result in the same way but the only thing is that their explanation some description of the attainment description of the enlightenment liberation is only in a different state in a different way that alone creates some confusion otherwise the matter is very simple very ordinary there is no problem there is no hurdle so if you want to do something then you have to work but here there is no work for us ourselves we have to understand that there is no work on our part the very understanding that we have no work on our part is known as enlightenment and if you come to the conclusion like this we allow the mind to function on its own otherwise we will not allow we will do something we will try to manufacture it we try to create something we try to decide uh, some uh, some design upon that but when we understand we have no work on our part with related to the psychological world psychological function of our mind we leave the mind on its own we place the mind on its own so if we leave the mind on its own if we place the mind on its own the mind function on its own the very function of the mind on its own is known as liberation but the understanding that we have no work on the upon the mind is enlightenment this is pure science anybody can understand but if you expect any some good experience forever this experience is nice this experience is good then we have to prefer yoga practices meditation but the liberation and the enlightenment is different it has no connection with the meditation practices it has no connection with the experiences but there are experiences there are many great experiences strange experiences there are many things i am not denying it but whatever comes that has to go that's the healthy state of experience if any experience takes time to go away from you it will destroy the health all experience is a, it is a kind of chemical change created with in our body even it is a bliss consciousness it is a kind of chemical change some chemical reaction within our body so if the chemical reaction is continuous it will naturally affect the health of the body then one one person at chennai he got the bliss consciousness like me and he was blissful and he slowly he got some boils throughout his body and he was hospitalized but he did not he did not feel any problem he did not feel any pain even though he was hospitalized and slowly he died but but no pain for him and one person he he got some interest upon another teaching he is also chennai and he also told me about his experience i feel myself 
grow from the grow to the world for now i have the feeling of exp my experience throughout the room and slowly i my i feel myself even beyond the room and uh, i have the experience like this and i asked him are you interested upon this experience and if you are interested slowly you have to be free from that experience it may be good it may look good but it is not it is not really good we slowly get down from this experience but the later but i have no message from him and later uh, heard that he has also died because of some disease but what but are uh, the experience whatever may be it may be a good thing but time being it is okay it may be helpful it may be helpful even for the health itself if is coming and going it, it may be good it may you may have a good sleep good health it may it may help for your health but it is very strong if it is for ever it is not good but most of the people are thinking that enlightenment and liberation is a strange experience like this but really it is not so you may hear the zen story and two youngsters want to join in a zen monastery and they on their reception the master of the monastery ask them what kind of drink you, you want to have do you want to have the greatest drink of the monastery or some fruit juice on your choice and the two youngsters do not know anything about the drinks of the monastery greatest drink of the monastery they also know something about the fruit juice but they do not know anything about the greatest drink of the monastery so they prefer so i would uh, like to have the greatest drink of the monastery because we have already taken many juice but i do not know what kind of drink you are offering so please give the greatest drink of the monastery they asked but they were given plain water this is the greatest drink of our monastery so the two aspirants thought the master had deceived them the next day also the same thing happened what kind of drinks you want to have the greatest drink of the monastery or some fruit juice the master asked the aspirants and the visitors were very shrewd so they preferred fruit juice instead of the greatest drink of the monastery so they were offered a uh, fruit juice as according to their choice but operators what happen is that whenever they are thirsty fruit juice alone was served but they were forbidden to give the water no water is supplied only fruit juice whenever they are thirsty only fruit juice also give, was given for one week but after one week whenever they are offer fruit juice they begin to vomit <laughs> so then the master asked now what kind of drink you want to have 
the greatest drink of the monastery or your fruit juice on your choice. So the both of them, uh, so I'm sorry for master, please give the mona drink of the monastery. So what is the greatness in the water, plain water? Actually, fruit juice is good. It is tasty. What taste you are having for in the plain water? But enlightenment and liberation is just like plain water. But we think it would be some great experience, some exciting experience. Thinking like that, we are deceiving ourselves. But whenever some persons may not have the good experience forever, or sometimes it comes and goes, it doesn't matter. So they may derive, they may ex they may expect if it if, we, if the peaceful state, if the blissful state is forever, it is very good. It would be enlightenment. It would be liberation. They may think like that. They may dream like that. You may d if you may live the rest of your life in the dream world like this doesn't matter. But if, we, but if you have the full swing, full swing of the experience, then only you know the reality of the experience. So if you are come to the reality very early, it is good for ever. It is good for all. If you want to have the blissful experience forever, then you have to try on meditation and practices and everything. And sometimes they will have some occult power. And one person in Chennai <coughs> is interested to know the future. I want to know what will be happen in the future? I must have the capacity like this. And he, he did some medita meditation for that. And after 12 years of practice, he succeeded in his venture. Now he know what will happen in the future. He has the capacity. And after getting success in his practice, he phoned his brother. After 12 years of practice, I succeeded my career. But unfortunately, I was caught in that in a trap. No, <laughs> no one should try this way. <laughs> because if the future is in a good state, we may enjoy <laughs> even advance in advance, but it may be some some problem maybe in the future. Why should we have the problem in advance? So we'll be in a tortured state. So, so in in our area, some one person will have some occult power. If you ask him to give he give, uh, give the sweet. He will offer, he will put your uh, hand upon you and uh, give some sweet what you would require. Whatever may be the sweet, some rare sweet he may offer you through, through uh, helping, helping like this and put the sweet to you. Who, uh, how, many, how much quantity you may ask, <laughs> he will give you. So after giving many things like this to the many persons, afterwards he will say, now I am very, ha very, am very hungry, please bring some food in, in a hotel or anywhere. But he cannot create anything for his own. So that is the curse. So in the occult powers, everything is real. It may be there. Some strange experience is good. Everything is there. It is not good. It is not uh, false. 
everything is real it all are useless not only useless they are it is a cheat they are cheating us they are misleading us so we have to be a beware of that but the but the reality and the enlightenment the liberation is our natural state so if you select something in the name of power in the name of experience then we are entering into a wrong way entering into a wrong route selecting a wrong route so if you select the wrong route the destination also will be wrong so after dashing our head and got injury alone we have to return to the old returning to the reality but we have to be if you are if you are open if you are serious we have to be in the natural and uh, the real one very yearly very in advance actually it is not only for the spiritual people it is only for it is common as an ordinary person will must have to know must have some knowledge about the enlightenment liberation so that is why now we are teaching the same syllabus but in a different name but not in the name of enlightenment liberation but in a different name you are teaching the same thing for students itself the students are understanding this so this is purely psychological and purely scientific so anybody can under anyone can understand so we have to understand psychologically we have no duty that we have to understand the first thing we have to understand that psychologically we have no duty but at the same time physically physical thing is different psychological thing is different tomorrow we are going to do we have to discuss what is psychological what is physical no today we are limit ourselves within the psychological matter we are limit ourselves within the spiritual world alone we are not dealing with the physical world we are dealing with the psychological and spiritual world when the spiritual world is concerned in the psychological world is concerned we have to understand we have to enquire we have no work here the understanding is known as enlightenment in the vedanta scriptures they used to say there may be many yogic practices there may be many sadhanas but all sadhanas all practices will lead you to the lost door but the lost door for the liberation will open only because of enquiry only because of self enquiry you may go to the up to the level of lost door many door may be there and up to the uh, lost door you may travel because of many practices yoga many practices of yoga many practices of something or other but in the final door it will not open because of your practices 
we can suffer sadhanas. No philosophy, no practice, nothing will open the last door. The self-inquiry alone will open the last door. For example, we are here at Salem. We have to go to Chennai. How we are going to go to Chennai? We have to plan. Whether we have to take bus, whether we have to take train, whether we have to take flight, we have to plan. We have to plan first and then execute. But if you want to go to Salem, or if you want to go to the Bhavan, what you have to do? You need not do anything. But whenever you are in the Bhavan, you need not do anything. But at the same time, you have to find out that you are in the Bhavan. You are in the Bhavan itself. That you have to understand. For understanding, you have to inquire. Unless you inquire, you will not find out that you are in the destination itself. So here, it is said, as there are many doors, and after the final door will open, only when you have self-inquiry, that means, as if you are going to open door, actually there is no door at all. You are where you are, have to be there. You are in the final destination itself. But you have to inquire. Inquiry is good. You have to understand you have no work. If you understand that you have no work, that you are in the final state, in the final stage. The final stage is natural state. Our mind is functioning in the natural state. Only because of many ideas, many expectation, we are torturing the natural function of our mind. If we do not torture the natural function of our mind, the mind will function automatically. The mind will function naturally. The very natural function of the mind is known as the liberation. But whenever they are, we are having the name, the liberation, we think a strange state uh, apart from the natural function of the mind. But actually they mean only the natural function of our mind. But this is an unfortunate thing for ourselves. We expect some other thing upon our natural state. So psychologically, we have no work. For example, we have some problem. We want we have to settle some dues tomorrow morning around. $10,000 or anything is tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock we have to settle $10,000 but we have no money in our hand so we are, we are very tension whatever may be the process we tried but uh, there is no success if we, if you do not pay, if you did, if you do not pay the amount in the stipulated time, we have to face many problems. So, so in the night we have no sleep, we are restless. 
we are unable to take food so ordinary people uh, person what will do in that situation an ordinary person what will he do he will take a bottle of drink he will consume an alcohol and he will <laughs> sleep <laughs> peacefully <laughs> or blissfully <laughs> go to a blissful state or taking a sleeping dose and sleep freely so taking the tablets taking alcohol is it to settle the dues is it but it is to settle the psychological structure to settle the psychological structure along is taking the drinks taking the drugs go to take some settlement with the psychological structure is the spiritual world so how to deal with the psychological structure is the spiritual world the settling the settling the dues that is different that is the physical world so in the psychological world is concerned what you have to do so here on ordinary person is doing the drugs or anything and the spiritual persons are doing some meditation or other thing and and lock himself in a different state state of mind but it is a respectable state it is a respectable alcohol but basically both are same but actually the liberation is when the mind is functioning in the natural state whatever comes it will it will throw away everything if you see the running water of a stream or in a river it purifies itself nothing will stay there that is why our mind is in the natural stream natural for natural uh, flowing the natural flowing state of our mind is known as the liberation in the natural state nothing will stay all worries will flow away all worries all problems will washed away all knots will be washed away but it is our natural state but when we try to create a state within ourselves whatever we create it is an artificial state it is against the nature it is against the reality but for the beginners it is okay nothing wrong but i myself have practiced everything for 40 years it is too much for one or two years is justified but if you understand the mind itself is all right if it is if itself it is okay everything is okay it will look after itself and we will discuss what is psychological what is physical in more details in tomorrow morning and then other after the second session alone if we ask some question it will have some more clarification if in the first session itself we may ask question but it, it is not uh, 
is the more suitable. But if it is after the second session, it is well and good. So uh, tomorrow after the second session, we'll have the discussion in a more elaborate way.